Mm-hmm. I talk what I know. I know chat what I feel. No for them, no like Rasta youth. Because we keep it real. You never see me with no turban for me, but man, a bubble see me in a Tikongo see me. You never see me in the jungle, but man, a gorilla see me. Yeah, yeah. But not for them, I stay in a lion cloud house. Them around the church and the whole houses. Still, I see I for them. Rasta could never lose and ball it away. Yeah, yeah. Not time at all. Now for them a snake in a lion claw house Them around the church and the whole house Still I say I forbid Rasta could have never lose and ballet away Greetings and welcome to Jesse I Interviews As always I'm recording this on the lands of the Rundri people of the Kulin Nation and I want to pay my respects and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded This episode features two interviews with the Jamaican artist Bugle recorded six years apart in 2012 and 2018 As I mentioned in them, I regard him as one of the most consistent artists in Jamaican music over the last decade or two. I still feel that way about him now. He's a really unique artist, I think, both in terms of his vocal style and in the place he holds in Jamaican music, equally at home on a hardcore dancehall rhythm as a one-drop roots and culture rhythm, and not really fitting into any one category like many other artists. Let's get straight into it, starting with the first interview, recorded at Dasheka Studios in Kingston back in July 2012. Right now I'm on Red Hills Road in Kingston, Jamaica in the studios of Daseka, sitting down with the artist by the name of Bugle. Thanks for joining us here on Babylon Burning. Yeah man, cover the world like Google, you know? Babylon Burning and Bugle. Sick. <laughs> yeah. All right, I always like to start my interviews at the very beginning, so I'd like to know where you were born and what life was like for you growing up. Um, well, originally I was born in, in the countryside, yeah, Portland, one of the, the best parish them in Jamaica, of course. Um, it, was, it was like any garrison in Jamaica, the, the garrison life, the, the, the hard life, the, the, the life that we're... Um, my parents get ten kids, and we all have to, to share a two-bedroom house, so... You just use your imagination mm-hmm. and you'll see exactly what, what what that was like. Okay. Yeah. So what about your start in the music business? Um, well, my style is totally different from everybody else still. And that's one of the reasons why Bugle stand out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I ain't got no competition where music is concerned because no one else is doing it like I am doing it. Mm. Yeah, um, you, you will never hear, hear a bugle and say, oh, um, that sound like John Tom or Harry Brown or whoever it is. From a ear bugle, you just know it's a bugle that both vocal and lyrical context. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've noticed, the wall, I mean, one uh, thing that distinguishes you is the range, hitting the high falsettos and then the very low tones as well. Yeah, yeah. How did you develop that style as an artist? Um, to tell you the truth, like, I got the old falsetto thing from Farrell. Like, I used to love Farrell, like, wow, and Farrell always singing falsetto. So I find myself a sing everything where Farrell singing a false. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to develop the whole thing there, but um, m- I have a naturally deep voice still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, m- I definitely have a deep voice. So I just work with my voice still and bring it wherever I, I comfortable with it. That's it, basically. Okay. So how did you go from, uh, from being a youth in the country growing up to being uh, an artist working, you know, it's a, the, some of the top studios in Jamaica, top record labels? How did you actually first get your start in the business and what made you interested in music to start? Well, the transformation is from primary school in the country still, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, my brother who did, God um, ja bless his soul, is actually the one who introduced me to music. Yeah, um, he used to have like a little sound system and he used to like record everything on cassette and then play it back for me. Mm. And when he played it back and I listened it over and over, then I would actually flip whoever like the Papa son or the Lieutenant Stitch, I would actually flip their song with their melodies and everything but my lyrics. Yeah, so instead of it's referring to them now, it's referring to me because it's my lyrics but it's their melodies and everything. That's mm-hmm. how the, the old music thing really come about where me is concerned. And you know, start start singing at, at um, the event in and around the community, like the little school concerts and, and the youth club events and everything. And I was like, 
a star at maybe like age 14 in my community. So I like that was a great motivation for me. So I know right then and there that I have to leave out of the country because there's no student or nothing like that in the country. So I have to come to Kingston where it's all happening. Mm. So that's, that's how the whole music thing starts with me. Okay. So when you did come to Kingston, how did you get your first break? Well, um, I met with like various producers. Like my first song was recording, was recorded at Mixing Lab Studio, and that was that was a long time. That was like when I was maybe like seventeen, eighteen. Mm -hmm. I record my first. I never heard it on the radio or anything, but I, like I feel really good for no say. I actually experienced going into a studio like a Mixing Lab Studio, where you know the great Sly and Rabbit work at that time mm. you know that that was a great feeling so even though i never hear it on the radio i know that i'm on my way yeah i'm heading for something better mm. yeah um that was as i said that was my first song what so year was that um i don't even remember <laughs> but that's that's a long time still that's that's like early 90s okay still. that's early 90s right that far back yeah so um when did you first really bust in the music um, after that, I've been doing a lot of work with various producers. Like I used to be at Big Ship Studio at one point. Um, I, 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 I did a song with Benji Myers at one point, and he came out on his album, which was you know an international thing for me. Um, that song was that album was released in Japan and a couple of place, places. Um, after that, like you know, um, I start I started working out with different different producers such as renaissance and other people i started touring with elephant man mm -hmm. after the whole breaking up of the scare them gang um me and elephant man become friends and i start writing songs for him okay and after writing songs for him now i start touring with him i've been to like for for like 2002 three four when elephant man was at his peak in music like Everywhere Elephant Man went, I was there with him. Like the BET, the the the, the MTV, the, the 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 songs that he sings with the Janet Jackson, whoever. Like I was always there, helping him, you know, in whatever way I can, writing, right. performing with him, opening show for him and, and, and his tour and all of that. Um, I decided to stop work with Elephant Man because it wasn't helping me; it was only helping him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I wasn't comfortable with that because that's not what I really wanted to do. I sure. wanted to be bugle, not mm -hmm. not bugle, elephant man friend, yeah. uh, elephant man like a second where I want mm -hmm. to show film. I want to be bugle, the bugle, because that's my dream from day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been in music before I even know elephant man. Maybe I've been in music before elephant man. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't a hundred with that. So. Like after the last, after one of the tour them, I think it was 2005 tour, um, US tour, I decided that I wouldn't even continue the tour. So I actually leave the tour before it complete mm. and catch a flight and come to Jamaica and just tell his manager, don't buy back no more ticket for me. I'm not going on the road with him anymore. I just want to do my thing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy, yeah, because as I never grew up as a as a rich youth with nothing like suffocation basically. So mm -hmm. when me leave Elephant Man now and come back to Jamaica with nothing is like me the zero again. But like I didn't mind. Mm -hmm. I just know say in order for me to get somewhere like my afford me afford. Yeah. Yeah, and that was like 2005. I started working with SSMG, another label. In two t for f I worked with them for one year. Mm -hmm. it, it never did I get nowhere either. I like I, after a while, it just get uncomfortable where you know um, it now work the way how me think it's supposed to work because for me, music is not about money or hype. Like everything will come after if you deal with the talent at first. So I did it for one year and I, I wasn't comfortable. I leave and after that one year, I met with Sirani from Dasika, of course, and the first song I voiced in April of 2007 was the exercise song, and that was it. So <laughs> I was just in search, mm -hmm. yeah, I, ju I was just searching for that exercise. Yeah. yeah. Well, looking back, I guess the first, the first song, I mean, I always knew Bugle from, uh, from 45s back in the day, mm -hmm. um, the game has changed, we don't really have the vinyl anymore, but the first, the first one that I remember getting was actually an MP3, 
Um, I don't remember ever seeing it on vinyl, but the first one that really made me go, wow, this is something different, was what I'm going to do. A very different yeah, that's sound. That's the exercise. Yeah, yeah. That's the exercise rhythm. Yeah. See, I never knew what the rhythm was yeah. called. Well, the song is called What I'm Gonna Do, but yeah. um, because of the fact that the song is the exercise every day, yeah. um, it, it no, it popular known in and around Jamaica exercise. as exercise, but same. it's what I'm gonna do. It's okay. That's the same one. What I'm gonna do Exercise every day and I'm still not fit My kids are hungry and I ain't got shit What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do What would you do? Exercise every day and I'm still not fit My kids are hungry and I ain't got shit What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do This is what I'm about to do all right, so we're on the same page because that's mm. the first. I always think that period is when I think the world started. Certainly in Australia, where I come from, yeah. is when the world started to sit up and take notice of Bugle, yeah. and then from then on, you know, every song people pay close attention to. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely had a different sound, um, both the vocal delivery and even the rhythm. True. Sure. Um, and I guess it's also the same point where other. Personally, I started to really take notice of Daseka. There'd been other productions from them before that, but yeah. it seemed like they kind of bust at the same time as Bugle. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, Sarani yeah. as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So what about, can you tell us about that that style of the music? Um, it's different to traditional dancehall. It's different to traditional reggae music. Well, um, to tell you the truth, like, sorry, um, I started out, I started out basically like Sing J, yeah? Yeah. Um, but what happened, what, what happened with me and it's happening to a lot of young artists currently right now is they tend to swing to where the hype is. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time when um, an artist is not, uh, not too good at DJing like DJ, DJ, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Shabba DJ, hardcore DJ. But because of the fact that that's what the people are um, sticking to at this point, an artist actually, we call it water down in thing. For, for sound, for, for of that hype sure. that's happening at the time. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I did that. I used to DJ, um, me and Bimarco have sang where we were talking about shoot people and all of that. And like, I wasn't comfortable with it. And, and at one point, I said to, to Dimarco, like, the last DJ song I did, what I was talking about, gun and shoot, it was with me and Dimarco. And I said to Dimarco, if this song don't work, I don't do no more of them songs. Mm -hmm. It didn't work and I don't do no more. And that's right after that is when I did the, the whole exercise thing. Right. But that's, that's my comfort zone, really. And I like to go like deep. I like to talk about things that are affecting people in a positive way. Like, I, I, I would want to make a difference in a positive way. Mm. Because in everything you have good and bad, you have right and wrong, you have up and down. You, you understand? Um, when you sing about gun, you actually I tell the youth them say, that's a way that you can turn to also. Just like when you sing positive music, you're still telling the youth them this is a way that you can turn to. Mm -hmm. I rather tell them about the positive way. I'm comfortable doing that. I don't have headache when I don't sing a song like that. Like I don't have to think about it and say, John, I, I, I don't comfortable with that, mm -hmm. but I have to do it because of the hype and the money. You understand? Yeah. I don't do that and I'm comfortable not doing that regardless of what want to hype or who want to hype like I would st I will stay where I'm at yep. and be comfortable and I'm comfortable I'm 110% comfortable with what I'm doing I may not be the biggest artist in Jamaica but I might also be the biggest influential artist in terms of conscious music mm -hmm. so I'm great with that yeah when you go to sleep at night you can sleep I'm solid comfortable like yeah. I People send me million a message, not not literally millions, mm -hmm. but people send me lots of message on Twitter and Facebook and everything telling me about my music. Like since morning, I probably talked to 15, 20 people on Facebook alone who okay. saying like, your song them is just different and like I'm one of your biggest fan and your song is like a guideline to my life and mm. you make me actually start work now. You make me go back to school and get a job now because of a particular song example like journeys like a lot of people just say journeys are them life mm -hmm. you understand so i feel good like that's my accomplishment yeah when me can change people in a positive way 
with lyrics. And when me that stood or are that home and I sing song like that, I wasn't thinking about like changing people's life, but may I do something positive. So automatically it will change people's life in a positive way. Mm. I'm comfortable with that. Respect for that. Uh, that's one thing I've always said on my radio program. I view you as one of the most consistently conscious artists in reggae music today. Not even talking about I mean, talking about all of the music, roots and culture included. Yeah. But um, that sort of consciousness is so rare in the dancehall side of things, where it is all hype. Um, we were at Scream Sundays in Denham Town Sunday night, and it's you know popcorn, cartel, Tommy Lee, mm -hmm. and um, you know you don't really hear anything different than the Badman gun tunes, and uh, apart from the you know skin out Punani tunes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> conscious, conscious music seems like it's becoming more and more rare in Jamaica. Yeah, it is. So why aren't there more people in a position like yourself singing more conscious messages? As I say, um, I blame not for that on the media, yeah, and the radio, and the TV, and the paper, like, example, what you just mentioned, like, all these songs, that, like, they get a big hype, mm. so the youth, them feel like this is the way to go, because this is the youth who hype, who is singing these songs, yeah, so the con it's like they put the conscious song one side, you have to, you have to just really, you have to be strong as a conscious artists not to get carried away because i've seen it all yeah. like mostly whole of artists get carried away because of money because of i mm. that's not my thing yeah as must say i'm comfortable like i swear i'm comfortable mm -hmm. i drive a 2009 bmw i have a 2010 camera i have a 2011 bike and i just buy a house like why would i go there i'm good like yeah. it's i don't run that down mm -hmm. i'm good like i'm going to england next week i have seven eight shows in england i'm comfortable i just coming from guyana last week why would i run that down mm -hmm. good i'm a force to reckon with because all these artists who doing those songs where you hear play in other dance and the people them go crazy if me and them supposed to do a show same place where you were sunday night they have to them are for good because me i gonna make them look stupid when i don't perform and may I perform conscious songs. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that. So where does the motivation come from for this? I mean, I know you have locks. Do you say Rastafari? Or um, what do you say? I always say Rastafari, spiritual? but um, I'm not a dieted Rastafari mm -hmm. still, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know my heart, I'm a Rasta youth still. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's like maybe a ear or so I my lock my ear. And exercise all of them song that is from 2007 coming up mm -hmm. and this is 2012 so that just goes to show that you don't have a lax to be a rasta or you don't have to have lax to sing certain song mm -hmm. or to write certain songs true you understand so um i feed off a positive energy because i'm a positive person and i i always try to develop a negative into a positive picture regardless of what still yeah, so I stay positive as long as it's not HIV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See. So when you sit down to write a song, like what is the process you go through? Um, it depends. The rhythm, um, the, the, the whole vibe where I feel. Mm -hmm. Like we could be doing this interview and you say one thing to me and you give me a song not knowing that you give me a song. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a good listener. And they say a good listener is a good learner. So I'm always listening. So, you know, like it... it I, I, I don't even smoke like that. I drink occasionally. I smoke if I feel like mm -hmm. smoke. Yes, yeah, so I, I'm not an addicted smoker mm -hmm. who have to smoke to all a vibe. Right. I don't have to hide or nothing. Like my thing is natural. Like mm -hmm. I just do it. I just wake up and do it. For real. Tell me about the relationship with Daseka. Um, the relationship with me and Daseka is is more family than business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, some mishap are going on in the world that's the thing right now with Sirani. Um, he's out of that's the um, That is dishes. And he's the one who actually bring me in that's the mm. But I'm not going to leave that's the because Sirani leave because I'm comfortable with that's the mm -hmm. And I might not be comfortable with what where Sirani gone right now. So mm. I stick to the evil of me, you know, still. So if. But that's Yaka for me still. As I said, David and Craig, I'm my brother them. Sirani, I'm my brother too, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, the brother will move out of the house right now, so. Fair enough. <laughs> we are going to keep it family the same way. Right. So what uh, what's in store for you in the future? Um, good work, more positive music. Um, 
I have I have a couple of artists that I'm working with right now. Jamil, mm. proper fade, mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. um, vibrant is getting a, a a real good vibe right now in the streets with mm -hmm. that um, that song. Um, my life on a milk and honey and syrup. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, one. I do. Yeah, um, yeah. My artist, I actually, I basically produced that song. Yeah, cause okay. it's just a friend of mine sent me the rhythm from England and send me some money to voice on there. Um, um, a voice on it and then I write the song for Vibrant and have him record it and put the harmonies on there and everything and get it mixed and everything okay. and send it back to him. When I sent it back to him, he was like, I didn't want no other artist on the rhythm. So I said to him, all right, here what? Take off my artist off of your rhythm and take me off of your rhythm to first thing tomorrow I send back your money. Because, like, you know, it don't cost you. Mm -hmm. I wrote the song, I, do the, I did everything. So... You know, and like every day, him call me half late saying, Yo, like vibrant, bad, and the people them love him. And you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's just a thing, it's just music. So I have them artists all I work with right now, I try to push out of the road, and them are going real good. Like everywhere I go, and them profound people talk a lot of good things about them. Yeah, nice. So yeah, that that a, that are something where you know that is a good accomplishment for me. True. Yeah, for try and help some you because as soon as one of them get the big break, then I go bring in another new youth into the camp and bust in the same way. That's mm -hmm. just my thing I'm here right now. I'm currently doing a reggae, um, a reggae like real reggae album with Sly and Ravi. Mad. Yeah, that's what I'm working on currently. But Sly is in Europe right now on okay. tour. He'll be back in like September, October. So as soon as he get back then, we're in the studio working again. We're looking forward to that. Is there, in wrapping things up, is there a message you want to pass on to the people listening in Australia? Um, Australia is just a place where I'm always getting the love from. I'm looking forward to coming to Australia as soon as possible. Like, if I could come to Australia tomorrow morning to sing for the people, I'll do that. And and trust me, like, me another artist that I got tell the people, tell the promoter, say, I forgot to give me a million dollars because Australia is far. Mm -hmm. I'll do it from my heart. I, I cannot do it for free, but <laughs> I'll do it for doing it sage. Sure. I really want to bring myself to the people them, mm -hmm. to perform for the people them, to make them see who Bugle is and, and what Bugle have to offer, not only on record but in person. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that, uh, that, uh, that is uh, something I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So Australia, I'm looking forward to see you ASAP, cover the world like Google, Bugle. I don't worry about them pagans, I don't see them through me raven. Australia, we no worry about them roaches. Cause I don't have a bacon I don't worry about life But me worried about the head Australia no worry about we're gone already What we worried about so we're not gone yet Cause some people stop by obstacles My journeys continue The devil is always gonna be around haunting you Every single day he will be taunting you Babylon always looking something to plant on you Jah be with you Cause I can't roll mud. Yeah, all right. Respect. <laughs> Give thanks for joining us here on PBS. Yeah, man, definitely. PBS. Cover the world like Google, Bugle, Jamaica, Dasika, Red Hills Road. We're proud of it, you know. Sick. Mad. Okay. Ready again. Covering the world like Google, Babylon burning the radio. Pull up, pull up. Come again. Mm hmm. Ready. Covering the world like Google, Babylon burning with Jesse and PBS FM, yeah. Cause if you think you know me like I do, like I do, just take one step in a show. Just try one step in a show. If you been through what Jesse been through, just one step in I'm sure. Just try one step in I'm sure. PBS are the best, nothing less. Sick. Mad. Um, One more? Yeah. Sick. Jesse said, Ja be with you, cause I can't roll. Let Ja be with you, cause I can't roll. Ja, Ja be with you, cause I can't roll. May Ja bless your soul. Yeah. 
covering the world. Hear me, I say now, Babylon Burning Radio, you know, with Jesse Ayn on PBS FM. One of the realest thing, cover the world like Google. Jesse I and Bugle. Simple. Now nah, show no dimple. Sick. Bad. I'm doing the old song then. Okay. Um. Ready? Mm-hmm. Jesse say, if you blame life, you blame who give it. Don't blame life, blame the way how you live it. Jesse, I ain't not sleeping weak. No make mistake. So blame it on the friends them in your surrounding with fake. Babylon burning. Music we play. Money we earning. Them not learning. Sick. Mad. PBS, you know, we're blessing her. Real and proper. Mad. Bugle speaking to me at DeSecca's studio in Kingston back in July 2012. Let's jump forward six years now to the next time I caught up with Bugle at his own studio, Anointed, in July 2018. Them and all who are chat, we mute them Them no smoke, them no sick, them no have pink eye But them I red, yeah Them a follow me a lead, them a pre and a grudge me for my mates Them a set trap for me fall in a dot but time and a nine dead So all who are weird for me fall down face, them a got disappointed so I'm in Havendale, Jamaica at Anointed Studios with the owner for the yard, the great artist Bugle. Thanks for joining us here on PBS. Bless our love. What's up? So tell me, um, it's been a while since we caught up. This is the first time I'm seeing this studio. Tell us about um, the, the recent works for Anointed. Well, um, my first project in this studio, which is my Anointed studio, was my um, Be Yourself album. I don't know if you have a copy of mm-hmm. it. But I'm going to make sure you have it before have you it. go. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, but um, we're just doing some work now. We're working with Sugar. We're working with other artists such as Bird's Eye, new artists. We're just really doing a lot of work with younger artists other than my projects. Now, for those people that um, missed the first interview and don't know the, the full background, can you give us a little bit of background on, on who you are as an artist and how you came to be in this position today, how you got your start in the business? Well, I'm Bugle, um, a writer, recording artist. Um, now become a producer, knowing that I have my own recording facility, of course. Um, I started out from primary school. I used to write songs for people like Bounty Killer, Elephant Man. I even wrote songs for Taurus Riley. Um, I used to do a lot of writing, yeah, but that's really not what I wanted to focus on. you know. But um, I think that was just a, a, another way of getting myself into the business by helping other artists. So even when I used to write song for Elephant Man, I was just doing it because, okay, I help you, you help me. That was really my intention. It never worked the way I wanted it to work, but I am happy I did what I did because I learned, I learned a lot from being around every artist, not just Elephant Man, every artist. And, of course, um, my first hit song was the... What I'm going to do, popularly known as exercise, or a.k.a. exercise, which um, is, is, is really my, my start to where I'm at right now. now um, I think the journey song, Some people stop by obstacles, my journeys continue, was the song who make people really know how serious me is. And a lot of people used to think that I wear dreadlocks even before knowing me when they hear them song there. You know, so it, that, that's just a lot of things I try to sum up to as short as possible, you know. So those early songs, The Breakthrough, they were with Da Seca, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we haven't heard much from Da Seca in recent times. Of course, you were, you were closely affiliated with Da Seca for years, but now and you have your own thing anointed. What's the relationship with Da Seca these days? Yes, um, the first um, set of songs was Da Seca, the, the exercise, the 
the the journeys, the what have I done to you, the um door with Sarani. Cause when me look, you know, some people face me know so them not like we don't all them songs that was produced by um Dasika. And me and Dasika still have a good relationship, you know. Um we don't work together no more per se. But we still have good relationship because that's how life is. You you grow up and you become your own man and you have your own family. You know, you buy your own house and you do your own thing and allow your father to, you know, live his life as your father. So it's just one of them scenarios that where we grow past certain things and we reach to the level where we have to stand up on our own foot and we have to fend for ourselves and we have to do what we have to do. But me and Dasyaka still have a good relationship. Um, maybe you're not hearing much about Dasyaka where production is concerned, but they're doing very well because they still manage Dexter Dabs, who is, who is, doing, who is doing very well. So um, they are still there. They are still doing their pieces, and I think they are doing very well also. And big up to Dasika. Now, um, looking at the new album, Be Yourself, uh, I was kind of surprised when I heard it because we're so used to hearing you on a range of rhythms, but this is really like a one-drop reggae music album. You made a conscious decision to do a real reggae album? Yes, I did. And as I say, um, when I opened my, my studio, that was the first project I work on which is producing my own album. Um, I'm in the process of putting um, my third album together, and that third album is going to be totally different because it's, it's going to be 99% of roots rock reggae music. One, uh, one of the songs, one of my favorite songs from the new album is Devalue. And it, I mean, it's a very slow song, but so much power in it. Tell me about that song. Devalue, you know. Um, where the production is concerned, um, it, 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 it is produced by me and a friend of mine from, from London. His name is Jeremy Ford, mm -hmm. which is the son of Brinsley Ford, the lead, the lead of Oswald. So actually that d Valley rhythm was a popular rhythm in the UK. Okay. Yeah, so it's just, we just rebuilt the rhythm and I recorded on it. But um, the, where the lyrical context is concerned, you know, um, it's like, Sometimes I, I sit and, and, and wonder what, what, what the youth's doing to themselves, what they're doing with themselves. Mm -hmm. So you find out, say, instead of me put it like, you know, we, we cuss the youth them because they bleach out them skin on a daily basis. So instead of me cussing them about that, I ask them if they bleach them brain instead of them skin this mm -hmm. time around. And as a devalue, I one of them songs that we really think the youth them a devalue themselves. We think they don't appreciate themselves. We think they don't accept themselves for who them is. And that's one of the reasons why the album name Be Yourself, because the, the easiest thing to do and the best thing to do is to be yourself. Over the years, I've said on the radio many times that I regard you as one of the most consistent artists in Jamaican music for the last 15 years. So many different other artists, um, maybe start with one style or have success with the one style and then um, change up looking for success again down the road but your music has stayed consistently conscious you know um, even you know even when you're doing dancehall as well as reggae but overall the message hasn't wavered what 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 is it about uh, you know where does this come from this sort of strength of character that you can maintain a certain level lyrically like that I think it's start process in, in anything at all you do. Whatever you think is, is what you talk about. Whatever you consume is what you digest. So whatever you feed yourself with is what inside of your body. So for, in order for me to be singing conscious music on a daily basis is because that's, that's how I think on a daily basis. And it's, it's easy for me to maintain because it's natural. It's not like I'm trying to do it. I'm doing it natural. And, and I can come and sit down in the studio without a song. And within 25, 30 minutes, I have a song. And any song, even the song that was playing in the background just now, you know, rise again. We smile, we ball, we rise, we fall. We will rise again and this time wiser than them. I probably come up with that song within 20 minutes after listening to the beat and then within another 30 minutes, it completely written on record. So that's just me, like it's just my thought process and me think that we are there every day. I pray on a daily basis and I ask God to bless me with positive words, you know, to do, to use in every case, not just in a song, but you know, in a every instance, Whoever I'm off a deal with, I, 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 I like to deal with people as people, regardless of who them is. Yeah. So it's just really a thought process because if you're a mechanic, then you might die your bed and I even my dream about the car where I go work on tomorrow. So me as an artist, I'm supposed to be thinking about music and, and what I would want to say in a song. 
So that's what that's what I that's how I maintain being bugle. Respect. So you mentioned the the third album is coming up. What else do, can we look forward to in the future? Well, in the future is always unpredictable. And for me to tell you that, okay, after this album, then this is what is going to happen, then that would be just assumption because we're not sure. Mm. We, we, we always work towards the future, but we don't have this great expectation because I think expectation is what led to disappointment. And I, I don't like disappointment. So based on that, no, I don't have this great expectation like, okay, this is what is going to happen and this is what is going to happen and that is what is going to happen. I work towards it, but I don't dwell on it. You understand? So I really don't know what the future is going to bring. Just the other day, I recorded a song with, with a rapper, which is a white virgin in the States. And um, I wake up this morning to some message saying that he just had a meeting yesterday with, with, with Def Jam and mm. they really love the song and they want to video it and use it as one of the first singles of his album that mm. is coming out now. And he's a great rapper. You listen to him at, uh, um, for the first time, you, you might not know that this guy is actually a white man because he might rap like, oh, me wrote a rapper. Mm -hmm. You understand what I say? Wicked. It's not like white man can rap, but <laughs> you understand what I say? Yeah, it's not no stereotype thing, but you know, it's just the fact of it. Him sound like like any one of the ghetto youth them were in America rap. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so when I first heard it, I was like, whoa, so I have to Google him because I never hear him before. I have to Google him and Google him and see him. I was like, whoa, I'm impressed. This dude is wicked. You know, so that's just how music is. You don't know what is going to reach where. So you have to just work and work to the best of your ability and always try your best to show love to the people around you, you know. Mm. I respect Bugle. Is there any last message you'd like to pass on to the people listening in Australia? Um, there's always messages that I always like to leave with people, you know. And one of the, one of the messages, um, always try your best to be human, you know. Um, help somebody no matter who it is help somebody and and never forget to be yourself because you're trying to be somebody else is extremely hard and you might not know how hard it is trying to maintain somebody else's life but it's hard because me wanted to be like you mean me have to watch you everything what you do and try to keep up with your lifestyle which is not me so the easiest thing for any man to do is to be themselves love yourself because if you don't love yourself, it, it's not possible for you to love anybody else. You know, and show gratitude. Help somebody, as I said, no matter how simple it is. You might pass someone out the road and, and he's begging and he was like, he's always there begging, I have nothing to give him. But we is the only people him have to depend on. So he has to beg us. So if you can stop and give him a dollar, give him it, it might change him life. All right, well, speaking of gratitude, we do give thanks for you taking the time. It's always a pleasure. Bugle, respect. Give thanks. Job blessing always. Anointed. Yeah, that's the far right party. Mm -hmm. Sean is on record. Me do ya a go and build, a go and chill. And I sip some roots of bubble hill. Cause Rasta no consume season poison. Yeah, in other Rasta party, yeah. Everything done upload. Every Rasta we see me, see me make them proud. Fresh like water on the grass with a green lot of prince and princess things and queen. Bugle there, speaking to me back in July 2018 from his home and studio in Havendale, Jamaica. That's it for this one. As always, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, the Don Armageddon Time. The Real General Empress Irie, Amy Idrins, Mr. DC, and Tom Tanneke. I'll never get rich from this podcast, but the Patreon does cover the coasting hosts, and I'm very grateful. If you'd like to support the thing, you can sign up for as little as a few bucks a month over at patreon.com forward slash jesse underscore i underscore interviews. Thanks for listening. Eyes is every time. Hear me, as an rascal, Jesse I. Chant down, and we are chant down, Babylon, though. As a real sound, we sing fine, Chant down, sound, though. Jesse, no worry about them playing. We put bullets through the raver. Rascal, stand, no worry about them rushing. Dance, we don't have a baker. Stand down, no worry about them. But we worry about them. Jesse, I did no worry about them. Why you worry about them? I was not one. Cause I have a plan to every man That's why Just to not worry about no one 
wine do it, stay focused, stay strong Pay attention to the journey where it depends People always go a bad person Develop negative in a positive today Turn down, they always talking shit But the time when you lose or the time when you quit Hey, 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 hey Just don't no worry about them crazy We put bullish through them raven Rats go, don't so no worry about them rush Cause we don't know who they are but we worry go there. Melbourne, and where we go, we're gonna be. Where we worry go, I wanna go. I see rap with my team in a play. For the work, just see I do them can't be. No matter how life carry, it fits in a hurry. Only we are the rats, I worry let them can't break. Remember of the every action, there is a reaction. Negative, positive, choose to have an action. Love can't be a real man. I am. Cause I turn down at the champion Hey, hey Just you not worry about them crazy We put bullets through them raven And we not worry about them roaches Rap school shall done up in Vegas Turn down and worry about the night But you worry about day Just you not worry about the run away Why you worry about the one up one yet We not worry about the night